I just felt like I never saw my kids. I couldn't even like sign them up for sports or anything because I had no way to get them to practice. Like I, I didn't grow up around like family, like grandparents where they can help out and stuff like that. It just wasn't an option for us. And, um, you know, when I got sick, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise. Like I could finally be there for them the way I always wanted to. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. What's up? What's up? How have you been? Uh, well, I've missed you. I missed you too. And I'd like to apologize for um, <clears throat> like oh, going MIA, going AWOL last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, I hope it was COVID. Because honestly, I mean, I texted you that and I just said, I just feel like I just cannot get out of bed. I, I thought I would just like had fallen into like this like depressive state of anxiety and I just couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Like the simple task of like walking into the kitchen to try to get water, like I would have to think about it and tell myself like calculate it, like, and tell myself, like, you can do this. Cause I was so weak. Like I could not get out of bed. So those couple of days you're trying to get a hold of me. I was just sleeping. Like I was just dead to the world. And then after a couple of days, I started to come out of it. And I just thought it was anxiety because, you know, the kids are, um, they're done with school Wednesday. And then we got to figure out if we want to stay in Phoenix and we got to get back to Charleston to finish our house or do we want to move to Puerto Rico like there's just like a and I don't know if it all just came crashing down at once like <laughs> I like realized like we got to start making moves or the second option what we talked about last night is maybe I have COVID because uh Maddie's um dive instructor we were, she had her meet on Saturday and Sunday morning. She, he sent an email saying that him and another coach tested positive for COVID. And Maddie's also kind of been like very tired, um, like stuffy nose, scratchy throat, things like that. We chalked it up to allergies. So we're going to go get tested today to make sure. Oh, you hadn't already? No, no. This is all just speculation. Oh. Yeah. Because I really, like, I'm hoping that's what it was. Because I've never felt tiredness like that. And just such a lack of motivation, like, to do anything. Like, nothing seemed fun to me. Nothing. I mean, that's, it sounds very serious. I So... I mean, I called you or texted you. You texted me last Sunday. You said, "Yeah, we need to we need to do an update. Are you free tomorrow?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah let's do it." And then I texted you the, to, the next day at like the time we were supposed to, and you didn't get back to me for like a half hour. And then you were like, "No." tomorrow <laughs> yeah and then I mean, the, I, honestly, the, I mean you like, repeated almost verbatim the same message the next day and then I didn't hear from you at all yeah I was just like I was sleeping and then I woke up and it was like seven o'clock and I was supposed to like talk to you like at five and I was like oh my god and I just had the meanest messages from me no I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, they were. I mean, they were legit. I was pissed. I'm sure you Wait, were. You're wasting my time. I know. That's what I... <laughs> I mean, I know. But seriously, I felt like I mean, so I bad. I could have been watching Jeopardy. You could have been doing so many other things than having to talk to me. I understand that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, like, I I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I've dealt with anxiety, like, for... A while now and this is like a whole other level of um well, so, and then I, I mean, was like who's, crying who's all the time huh who's, who's around 
like when this is happening was bobby around um no he was in yuma actually for a couple days of it when he got back i definitely got better so you know what i would do is i would just take the kids to school you know and that was like a whole process in my head walking outside it's like 20 steps to the car like i had to like think it out like how much energy is this going to take then it's mile down the street. Then I go to wait in line. I was like, I can do this. So I would take the kids to school. I'd come back and just get back in bed. And then my alarm would go off to pick them up at 3.30. <laughs> Jeez. This, and this went on for like three days. And I, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't, like, I couldn't do anything. I didn't want to do anything. And then when Bobby came home, I just burst into tears. Like I couldn't stop crying. I go, there's something not right with me. I was like, I have no motivation to like get out of bed. <laughs> I've never been like this in my life. And then I don't know. I just slowly started to come out of it. I started to get my energy back. And I went outside. I went swimming and went to the mall yesterday and i'm just <laughs> coming out of the funk i guess i don't know Jeez. it's yeah i see my doctors uh on the third that's the other thing when scans are coming up you know, like there's like this pit of despair i feel in my stomach every time so i'm sure it's just like a combination of everything and i'm not very good at like dealing with stuff I just like put it off. I'll deal with this later. I'll think about this later. And I think I was just like suppressing everything <laughs> for so long <laughs> that my body was just like, uh-uh, like you're gonna have to deal with some of your, your feelings one way or another. And so, yeah, I just had a long, hard talk with myself about just enjoying you know what's in front of you and try not to worry too much about tomorrow because it's going to come if you're worrying or not <laughs> like there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> it'll be here but then like when bobby got home I, I talked it through it with him and you know he was just like just one day at a time like we gotta get to charleston we have to finish our house and then mm -hmm. we're going to puerto rico for two weeks and then it's kind of like up to the kids, like, do they want to move to Puerto Rico? Do they want to come back to Phoenix? And then we have to sell our house or we have to rent it. Like we have to do something there. So we just have like a lot on our plates. Plus we're coming to see you and, you know, we're going to Anna Maria. Um, so we're actually going to stay here until probably July 8th and then take off and just go to Florida and then head up to Charleston after Florida. And then, um, no, we're going to leave Florida and go to Puerto Rico and then Puerto Rico to Charleston so we have a, a packed summer for sure well let's uh let's slow down a little bit for those who haven't <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, right. whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh for those that lots to unpack lots to unpack. yeah what you sipping on there this is voodoo ranger imperial ipa nine percent oh, alcohol dang so you only need two of these so i like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm a cheap date now <laughs> very good very good um yeah describe what puerto rico how did that get in in this whole conversation um well like most ideas i get it just came to me and i oh. decided that same day we're gonna do this <laughs> Yeah. Um, but my thought process was, I think what started it was we sold one of our vehicles and we paid off all of our debt, medical, okay. credit cards, everything. So the only debt we have is basically our house. Did you chop them and, up? Uh, I kept two for emergencies. We actually had six. <laughs> we had six rotating. So oh. two for emergencies. Because honestly, like it's it mostly was medical bills was i mean it's not like we're like out here like spending frivolously on stuff we don't need like it's 
uh, a lot of the cards, we just put it on the hospital thing and they just charge us whatever. Yeah. And it's so funny too, because the day we got a debt, I was so excited. And then I opened my mail and there's a bill for three grand. I was like, well, that was 20 minutes. <laughs> <Death free. laughs> oh, man. I know it sucks, but you know, when you're not paying the high interest and stuff, it's a lot easier. Oh, and what I learned never, ever, ever put medical bills on a credit card. Just go through the hospital. They'll do a payment plan and it's interest free. Interest free. Yeah. Yes. So we messed up. So we've been for a couple of years now, we've been like struggling with paying those off. And so we learned the hard way. Do not do that. Just go mm. through the hospital and they'll work with you for sure. Right. Um, what was I saying now? Oh, so yeah. And so I was like, well, I go, where can we go? Because of course I'm in the desert right now and I'm missing my beach. And I was like, where is it affordable to like go and buy a house, you know, oceanfront? And um, Bobby got off her job a year or so ago in Puerto Rico. So we went to visit there and I just loved it. And the people are so friendly. Their culture is like, amazing the most beautiful waters we've ever seen and so it just dawned on me I was like we could sell our house and buy a house oceanfront Puerto Rico cash plus buy a boat and we can just spend our days just island hopping and somehow I convinced Bobby that this was a great idea <laughs> and so that's <laughs> So we're going over there for a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to link up with a realtor. We're going to look at some houses and stuff. We're going to let the kids check it out. They haven't been there and see what they think about it. They would be homeschooled um, because obviously the schools there uh, all speak Spanish. So that would be difficult for them. You can send them to private schools, but for two kids, it's like 15,000 a month. And I'm just not balling like that right now. So they do have like online international schools and then those kids like all meet up like a couple days a week. And so they can like socialize with them and things. But yeah, so that's, that's my Puerto Rico dream. <laughs> what do you think of it? Well, um, <laughs> you've had some ideas and it's good to have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's good it's and good. you know every once in a while <clears throat> you know you got a dream and uh yeah and you got to think big and you know yeah. consider consider everything and you know really really sit down and hammer it out on paper and uh yeah and then yeah you know decide what's best for you and uh yeah. Okay, so here's the other thing we were thinking. Because I was Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. If there was a plan B, a, yeah. Oh no, this isn't plan B. This oh, is yeah. still plan A. Okay. Um they have um the roads there are terrible. Mm. And they need people to come over there and help rebuild and things. So Bobby was thinking we'll just open up like an asphalt company and we can help repair the roads. Plus, we can buy like a duplex for like $50,000 and we can rent that out too. Because there's so many homes that people just got their insurance money and just left. And luckily, Bobby knows how to build houses. Mm -hmm. So he can go over there and we can, you know, pick up real estate for cheap and build those houses um, and rent them. Now, obviously, you know, a lot of people in Puerto Rico they're upset with people from they call it the mainland coming over and doing this so you 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 want to be like sensitive to it like you don't want to like rack the rates up so high and just absolutely like devastate people because they're having a hard time finding housing as is so yeah. you definitely want to like go over there with some morality too uh -huh. and uh, you know not to like be slum wards kind of thing no, I, I hear you. Um, yeah. I mean, as, it long is, as, it, as long as you can be comfortable, there's no need to like be greedy about it. No, um, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
And I figured worst case scenario, like spend a couple years there, kids learn Spanish and we're off to wherever else we go. <laughs> I mean, we've been moving every couple of years. Why stop now? <laughs> but our main problem, honestly, is uh, Maddie is now at the age that she's done moving. So she wants to stay in Phoenix, which is fair. So I'm leaving it up to the kids what they want to do. Mm. Um, I did promise her if she moves to Puerto Rico, I'll get her two puppies. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Damn. Yes, yeah, so she has to really weigh her options. <laughs> so that's why we're going to go over there and check it out. Um, she can talk to some of the other kids that live there and things. And we yeah. do have friends there too. So it's not like we're just like going in blind. We already know people that live there. When she's diving now, she's getting kind yeah. of involved yeah. in that yeah, area. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm not going to be that person that like, drags are all over the place it's so hard for girls at that age it's gonna be 13 in september um you know to come into a new school and make new friends so i'm gonna leave it completely up to them the ball's in there for it. uh so if we come back to phoenix then um we have some stuff lined up here so honestly no matter where we go we're like fine i just came up with the idea of just like a life of leisure <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico right. with no debt and so that's what we're doing yeah and you where are you at right now you're still in the in-laws house probably? yeah yeah okay. yeah so you guys don't have a house there yet no yeah for a couple of reasons one the market's insane and two our house in Charleston before we left we we completely destroyed the master bathroom it's down to the studs because I wanted to make it bigger, of course. So we took out some closets and stuff to do it. So we have to finish that. And once that finished, then, you know, um, we can do what we want with, you know, if we want to buy against it or, you know, rent it out, um, which I think if we stay in this mainland states that we're going to rent it and use it as a down payment on the house out here. But yeah. he's been just spraying the prisons. We mm -hmm. went through that last video. Oh well, um, yeah, you guys never refinance, right? No, correct. Okay. Yeah. You finish yeah. up that master bat or bedroom. Bedroom, bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Is and it a bedroom or bathroom? It's a bathroom. Okay. An ensuite. Yeah, if you finish that up and then you refinance. When did you when was your purchase? 2015. Oh, okay. What was your interest rate? 3-1. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what, if you refinance your interest rate, probably go up. Yeah, we got a really good deal on it. Um, I don't know how we even got the house. Like it's, what it's worth now is like double what it was. So yeah. it's nice. I mean, that's, anywhere right now I mean, if you're going to sell your house do it now it's yeah. the time yeah it is the time so what are you doing more importantly all i got <laughs> was this blurb and everybody's mad about how quickly you you know kind of you're just like and i'm gonna make an empire and that was it you never really said that's why i asked you i go what is your day-to-day -day life right now like what are you doing <laughs> now um, that you're retired are you retired no not retired? yet I, okay I, I still got three more weeks till retirement three um, more weeks okay yeah um i'm just gonna you know kick back take it easy um yeah and you know do all the things retirees do um, okay i don't know i i plan on you know i will have uh a little bit of work lined up okay um, plus you got ebay Plus you have rental, right? Cor correct. You have income. Yeah, I got some streams, if you will. Um, I got eBay going. Um, and yeah, we have a rental property. Um, and then freelance work. But no, I am going to concentrate on, um, you know, putting together more content for online. Yeah. Um, and, do, and doing freelance projects that are kind of, you know, more, more, more things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, yeah. More, uh, so I, I'm in news 
and um, I'm wanting to do something along the lines of entertainment. Um, okay. And something that just is is completely different than what I have been doing. Not that there's anything yeah. wrong with it. It's just um, I'm looking to do something that feels a lot different than that. Um, so you want to be like more creative and be able to just do your own thing. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I just um, I'm looking to break new ground, break the rules, uh, be mm. like more more in it like an entertainment fashion um less you know journalism um mm. more more stylized um a little a little flashy a little a little fun uh humor throw yeah. some of that in there of course um, yeah i mean i i was gonna be pushing out my own content and you know helping uh some some businesses put out their content I had a I had a few people reach out to me after I wrote that just to be like, hey, if if you want to collaborate on things, um, you know, let me know if you're in the area or let me know if, if you have some time this summer or whatever and you want to get together, which I yeah. will. I have all the time in the world now. <laughs> um, Maggie Chesney thinks that you and I should collaborate on a book together. <laughs> she yeah. thinks it'd be really cool and funny. And I'm like, yeah, we got stories. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no. And you know, like I certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, I, I guess, I mean, my goal is to have more free time, um, yeah. you know, more time with family, more time yeah. with you, uh, more yeah. time with, uh, dad back home. Um, you know, same thing for my wife, April, um, you know, we're, we're hoping we can get some, some free time to see family more often, uh, have some flexibility so, with the scheduling. Yeah. Are you going to pull rhythm out of daycare? Like, are you going to start watching her or she's still going to pre school? Or? So she's still in it for now. Um, and we yeah. talked about that and I mean, I'd like to be able to, I like, I, I feel like it's, it's kind of like preschool. Like, I don't know if I want to yeah. completely remove her from that, yeah. Um, Cause totally. I think it's, I think it's good to have the socialization um, yeah. and the, and kind of like the group thing and have a teacher and like learn from other people other than, you know, just being in a house with one parent all the time. Yeah. Um, it's so true. But, but at the same time, you know, like uh, right now it's, it's dropping her off at, you know, eight 30 in the morning and not seeing her till 7 PM at night. Mm. you know i think we could do better on just the amount of hours in the day that uh she's with us yeah and so that's that's one part of it just the you know day to day how many hours she's in daycare but then it's also right. you know can we get to a point where she's part-time um right. you know, three days a week in daycare two 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 weekdays i would have her all day and we'd go on adventures yeah that'd be so fun yeah. I used to, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Like, like I used to be careful what you wish for sometimes. I used to <laughs> pray that I could just get like a job because my days off were Tuesdays, Wednesdays. They were so sporadic hours, like from 8 a.m. Could, I could be done at noon. I could be done at 10 at night. Like there was no like tally. I had no schedule. And um, Bobby's was the same way because we were in the same industry. And unfortunately, I just felt like I never saw my kids. I couldn't even like sign them up for sports or anything because I had no way to get them to practice. Like I, I didn't grow up around like family, like grandparents where they can help out and stuff like that. It just wasn't an option for us. And, um, you know, when I got sick, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise. Like I could finally be there for them the way I always wanted to and be able to get them in activities and you know spend so much time with them so you know I always say that cancer has definitely brought more good to my life than it has bad you know that's I think that's important to touch on because I mean you were working yourself and you know that, that, that that's part of you know one of the things that I would catch myself doing um is doing work 
you know, in preparation for, I, I guess like, you know, do the extra work, do the side hustle type stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, when you sit there and say, why am I doing that? Well, it's supposed to be for the family mm -hmm. at some point, you know, mm -hmm. for someday in the future, this will pay off. And it's just yeah. like, I would, I would catch myself, you know, whether it was doing extra work, um, you know, freelancing, being, being out, uh, shooting something or, or in, you know, locking myself in a room away from mm -hmm. April and, and rhythm. And I'd be like, well, they're right there. They're here right now. Why am I, why, yeah. why am I doing this work for, for someday in the future when here they are? Why don't, <laughs> yeah, why don't I so just true. go hang with that, out with them right now? We've just been so conditioned to believe that if you work hard, you know, pull your pants up or your bootstraps or whatever the saying goes, like you will be rewarded, you know, and um, there's like this weird stigma out there that like, if you're not sacrificing like every moment of every day towards work, then you're like lazy, then you're not like, you know, then your future is messed up. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with just corporations just like feeding that into our brains so that we do like I want to know when was the shift when did that happen that people were just like I'm gonna trade my entire life <laughs> to do this for money because that's really what you're choosing like your work becomes like your second life it, and a lot of people see people they work with more than they do their whole families oh yeah and, absolutely and it's just like when did this all start happening and no wonder people are just so angry it's <laughs> so depressed and sad and 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 they don't feel appreciated because they're not they're not paid anything for it it's just like you're trading your whole life for the job that you have so you better at least enjoy it <laughs> you know? yeah. this is my theory because you're gonna you miss so much I mean I feel bad because my kids they got in sports later and you can just tell like there's kids that probably started when they were three or four years old and I just we just didn't have that option we just could not do it it just our schedules were just not there we couldn't take them to practice or you know we work Saturdays and Sundays we can take them to games and so I feel really guilty for that. Um, but, you know, now I'm just trying my best to make up for it. And I promise I'm never going to go back to something like that again. Like I will, there's no money in the world worth it. I mean, I made a crap ton of money when I was in Branson, Missouri. And I really think that's what made me sick is I just wasn't around my family. I was just doing things I shouldn't be doing. You know, like just going to the bars way too often, but I was by myself. Um, so I think it was like God kind of like smacked me in the face and it was just like, you know, you need to get back to your family. <laughs> like, stop chasing the money. It'll you'll be fine. I'll take right. care of you. And he has. So it's all good now. Yeah. But I'm the type of person I need smacked in the face hard. <laughs> 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 Because I'll keep going until I die. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm glad. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're doing something that you love. And because you're going to blink and she's going to be 13. Well, like that's what I mean. Like, you know, I guess I just want time to sort of slow down. I wouldn't mind if the days were a little longer and more boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just... I, I marvel at how, you know, we found out she was pregnant and now it's like she's over a year and a half. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's times where it feels like it's, like it, it just always feels like it's, it's flying. It just, each week mm -hmm. just goes quicker. Um, each month goes quicker each year goes quicker yeah and uh, i'm just hoping it kind of slows down a little bit 
Yeah. Well, you're in the right direction. So yeah. I'm happy for you. Yeah. For sure. I figure if I just, you know, no matter what we're doing, um, as long as there's just time with me and rhythm, um, you know, it should should work out. I'll take her to the park during the day. Uh, I'll take her over to, um, you know, family's house and, um, you know, we'll go exploring. Yeah, I mean, there's not a person in the world that has ever been on their deathbed and said, I wish I would have worked harder and didn't see my family. <laughs> so right. it's nothing you're going to regret. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> I'll so I get to see you stuff. what? And like, I'm going to see you guys, right? Yeah. And uh, Anna Maria? Yeah. You're coming for the weekend. Yeah, I think so. What what's the setup? What do we do? We got a, a place? What do we got? I think <laughs> it's the we, worst thing for the we friend. Sleeping in tents? What are we <laughs> shacking up crash. together? What do we got? You can crash with Chris. I think he has an extra bedroom. And then we actually have a friend that lives in that area. So we're gonna stay with them. Okay. Yeah. And then we're gonna rent a boat one day and do like the island hopping like we did before. So that'd be okay. so fun. Have you seen the water there? It's been like crystal clear. Oh, like, I'm sure. It's, it's gorgeous. What um? Uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna ask you something. Um. Oh, how long are you gonna be there? A week. You're gonna be there the whole week. Chris is there. Yeah. Okay. And then we're flying out of Miami to Puerto Rico. Okay. So yeah. I might need your driveway. I might need to store a car with you. Yeah, no, I'll I'll cut you a deal. <laughs> Just send me the invoice. <laughs> yeah. No, we do that stuff. I forget the name of that program we're a part of. Oh, it's like an app. You've heard of that, right? Oh yeah, you, you can, can rent out your driveway. Isn't that like here's the spot? Or I'm sure there's probably it's it's like Uber and Lyft. There's probably like nine of them now. Yeah, yeah, it was a good concept. Yeah, or like people rent out their driveways to parking spots by beaches and stuff. Good for them. Yeah, very inventive. But yeah, I mean that's what's going on with us. We don't know what's going on. I like it. I I like that feeling too. I like it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of you know, life was pretty predictable before, and squeezing in all the things you have to do to run a household and pay bills yeah. once you get yeah. home and clean up and yeah. then uh then you hit restart on the day um so i don't know i'm just gonna just gonna sit here and play guitar and uh you know maybe go for a run maybe maybe, maybe call you yeah call me <laughs> i'll call, call you call me I need to start running too. I'm going to start documenting yeah. my gym sessions and stuff. Well, yeah, we don't have a hike to train for now, but if you, want to, run, if you want to run an ultra marathon with me. When is it? Uh, I just threw that idea out there. I'm not actually doing one. What is an ultra marathon? Um, like a real marathon is like 26 and an ultra marathon is usually i think it's like anything above that like you hear like the 50 you hear like the 100 mile you've never heard of these no and i'll tell you right now i'm not doing that <laughs> let me tell you something um now a marathon maybe half marathon yes i could totally train for that yeah maybe a marathon but yeah what so, i heard about marathons that's enough that's... Well, there there was an amazing book that i read that was one of the reasons i started running it was it oh. was called yeah it was called born to run okay uh, and it's all about ultra marathon runners and there's like i think they're called the the terra mora they're in the desert um, oh my gosh and they're they're like the the people of the desert that run and they're like almost like mythical and they just 
they're constantly just like in motion running and you know when you read the book they're like the happiest people in the world and they're just they exist they do exist yeah um it's about telling you what i live in a desert and walking to my car is a marathon it's like 110 degrees oh yeah no and it's those conditions they run in and they're like running like 100 miles like they'll run for two days straight and that and the book makes you like really excited about it because they're like yeah they're they're just like carefree they're they're, they basically are like in states of rapture when they do it you know like they're just so happy um running until they're you know shitting their pants isn't that what happens uh you know (laughs) you gotta expect a little bit of that i was watching um these videos of these people i think i don't know if it was triathletes uh and I guess their last thing is running and you just see like their legs give out, they're puking, they're oh, shitting, yeah. they're mm-hmm. pissing, they're like crawling. I'm like, why do people like what? Why would you sign up for that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's they a love lot, it. it's, I mean, it's a lot like chemo. Like what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't sign up. I know, but you got to do what you got to do to feel better. I've never shit my pants. Let's just. <laughs> you can yes, many a times. Shitting my pants, not so much. Well, let's but... start with, uh, why don't we try to run like a half marathon together? Okay. Y- you pick one and I'll, I'll, I'll make it to you. You swear? On my sister's grave. Oh, okay. All right. It's on. Half marathon, me and Scoob. And we'll document it. Okay. Hey, I got, I'm going to be a old fart retired guy here soon. I got, got to have something. Yeah, you got to do something. Got to have something to fill the hours. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. How's your eBay biz? What are you making now? Oh, I'm crushing. Just crushing. Um, (laughs) My uh, my thing says we have less than a minute left on this Zoom call. Oh shit! Okay. Um, why don't we table that? Uh, All right. But All I've right. been crushing it. How have you been doing? Um, so the place I used to get stuff, they changed some of their um policies. Like you can't cancel orders anymore, and so I slowed down a little bit. Um, but I'm still doing well. I probably make a couple hundred a week, you know, yeah. and I don't really that, put that much effort into it. That's about what I'm at. I, I do like a, a couple hours of searching for stuff on the, on Saturdays and then a, a few hours of, of listing and I make a couple hundred bucks each week. Yeah. I think it's yeah. worth it. I, I have the time of my life. One time I'm treasure hunting, one time I'm drinking while I list. There's a delicate balance to all that. <laughs> Well, anyways, I'm glad we could talk. I'm glad I'm out of my funk. Um, uh, I feel much better. But. Uh, I'm I'm glad to see you up and about. <laughs> A lot of people are. <laughs> well, let me love you, Scuba. Love you. Thank you so much. See you later. Thank Stay you. upright. Yeah, try Thank not to you. shit yourself. <laughs> I just shit myself right now. <laughs> <laughs>